Okay then my friends, so now we have this form with a few different form fields and now we need to be able to submit the form and gather the form data, right? So that we can use that form data to create a new to-do object and add it to the list. Now this is where using the form widget shines again because when we use that and therefore use the special form field widgets inside it as we have done then those form field widgets get access to another argument and this argument is called on save so let's quickly add this to the first text form field widget and the value of this argument should be a function that takes in an argument in itself which is the value held inside this form field so then the way this works is that eventually we can call a save method on the current state property of the global key object assigned to this form, much like we called the validate method on it. And when we do that, it's going to cause this unsaved function to run for any form field inside that form, which has that unsaved function registered like we do here. Then inside that function, we can do something with the value that we have right here. So what I'd like to do then is make a variable at the top of this widget for each form field value. So we need one for the title, which is going to be a string. And we need to set that to be an empty string to begin with. We would need one for the description, which is also a string. And that should be set to be an empty string to begin with as well. And we'd also need one for the priority, which we actually already have right here called selected priority. Remember, we update that every time a user selects a different option from the drop down. So then now we can go back to that unsaved function and update this title value. So then inside here, we can just take that title variable we just created and set it equal to value with an exclamation mark because we know it will have a value since we're passing this validator right here at this point. And we can do the same thing now. So I'm going to copy this in the next text form field. So after the validator, we can add on saved. This time it's the description that we want to update right here. Okay, so we've now updated those two values for the title and the description in the unsaved function. And remember those functions get triggered to run when we call the save method on the global key that's hooked up to this form. Now then, what about the drop down field? Well. We don't technically need to add an unsaved function to that because we're already updating a variable value every time a user selects something different from it. We did that using the onChange function. So although we could add the unsaved function to this form field as well, we don't really need to because we're keeping that selected priority variable up to date with whatever a user selects. So then the next step is to actually call the save method on the current state property of the global key. So it triggers those other two unsaved functions to run, which in turn assigns the form values to those variables that we've made. And then we can do something with those values like make a new to do. So let's do this then. So currently when we click on this add button over here, all we're doing is we're firing this function and inside there we take the current state of the global key and we run the validate function. Now that in turn runs those validator functions up here to check that we have a valid value. If we do, it returns null. If we don't, then we return a string and we show those errors. Now, as well as that, this function call returns a Boolean, either true or false. Now, if we return null for each of the validators, it means that all of the form fields are valid. And in that case, this is going to return true meaning the form is valid. If any of these return some kind of a string error, then this returns false, meaning the form is not valid. So what we could do is wrap this in an if statement. We could say if this thing right here, let's get rid of the semicolon. And then if this is true, it means the form is valid and we can fire this code block. And inside here, we could add a new to do. Now we only want to do that if the form is valid, don't we? So that makes sense. Now, the first thing we want to do in here actually is call the save method. So we can grab this thing, the form global key, and then the current state with the exclamation mark on the end of it to say we know this has a value. And then we use the save method on that. Now, what that does is look at any form field inside the form that has the unsaved function attached to it, like these two, and it fires those, grabs the values from the form fields and does something with them. All we're doing is updating these variables right here, the title and description. So then once we've saved the form using that method, we have access to the title, the description, and also the selected priority. Because remember when a user changes this, then it updates it. And if they don't change it, then we're just gonna use the initial value, which is low. 
So we have all three of those values and that means we can technically add a new to do because they take in those three values. So we want to update this state then, this to do's list. So I'm going to copy that down here. So after we save it and we update those values, we're going to say set state first of all, and we need to call set state because that triggers a rebuild of the widget tree and we need to rebuild. So we see the new to do over here. Inside here, we can take the to-dos and then use the add method on it. Now inside this, we need to pass in a to-do object and that to-do object needs a title. So the title, which is gonna be underscore title. We also need the description, which is underscore description. And we also need the priority, which is underscore selected priority. And that's pretty much it. Let's just add our semicolons and save this, try it out. I'm gonna click add and we get the errors. If we enter in some values though for this and then change this to, I don't know, low, we can go to add again and now we see the updated value or rather the new to do over here, awesome.